everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to talk about such an interesting topic as water treatment at a crayfish rest farm, at a farm for growing Australian red claw crayfish. We're going to see what this rest system should consist of and what technical parameters it should have. And here we go. And the first unit we will start with, of course, these are the tanks, to be more exact, the trays in which the crayfish is formed. These are actually small shallow trays, usually 20-25 cm deep. But for growing crayfish no more is needed, as crayfish crawls on the bottom. Inside these trays are special shelters. As a rule, they are pieces of sewage pipes connected to each other and forming single units, sections. The water temperature in these trays is 26-28 degrees Celsius. As the Australian crayfish is a tropical hydrobiont, trays can be placed in three, four or sometimes five floors or levels in order to maximize the production yield from one square meter of the farm. The dimensions of these trays can vary from 1 meter by 1 meter to 10 meters long and 2 or even 3 meters wide. The most important question is how is it to maintain these trays? In principle, the optimal size of a tank for a grow-out crayfish is 3-5 meters long and 1-1.5 meters wide. And about 2-3 times smaller trays are needed for incubation and broodstock. So, we have sorted out everything that concerns the trays. What's next? The water from the trays is drained through these grey pipes, collected in a single collector and fed to the water treatment units. Generally, water treatment at a rest farm for crayfish could be characterized as classic, because crayfish is farmed at low stocking densities of about 2 kg per square meter, that is, in principle, no more than 10 kg per 1 cubic meter. One water exchange per hour is sufficient then. That is, if you have, for example, 100 cubic meters of water in the trays, it means that you need to treat exactly 100 cubic meters per hour. Thus, it's one water exchange per hour. Water is drained to the water treatment units by gravity. And surely, we start with mechanical treatment. Mechanical water treatment can be implemented in different ways. Whereas in highly intensive farming systems for starch and trout African catfish, it implies using more complex system. When farming crayfish, they tend to be simpler in design. For example, if we are talking about a relatively small, even so-called household crayfish farm, there might be installed filtration mats that are used for ponds and large aquariums. Simple settling tanks can be used there. But if we are talking about a more or less industrial scale farm, then I can say for sure that the drum filter will be required. I don't recommend to use homemade solutions if you want to do business on farming crayfish. Mechanical water treatment unit is the first that needs to be taken care about. What are the main functions of mechanical treatment units? I think many of you, those who are already knowledgeable in rice design, understand. That is, it filters all suspended solids, feces, residues of an eaten feed. All this is trapped by the filters. If we are talking about a drum microfilter, it picks up everything on the mesh and then, in the process of the mesh clogging, an automatic flushing system is switched on and all the suspended matter locked to the mesh is washed away into the surge, and mechanically treated water is left in the system and flows further. And the second important unit, which is obligatory present at such farms, of course a biofilter. There is no way to do without it. Because if you don't install a biofilter, you will have to dramatically increase daily water consumption. And since you need to maintain the tropical water temperature of 26-28 degrees Celsius, you will have to spend a lot of money on heating. And why do that when you can just install a biofilter and reduce the daily makeup water consumption to about 3% per day? Actually, there can be different types of biofilters. For small systems, almost the same solution are made used of. Mats, various honeycombs, basically anything that turns up by chance. But if we are talking about an industrial scale farm, of course, a biofilter on fixed bed is required. It's the most common solution. What is it? It's a tank filled with water. In this tank, there are diffusers at the bottom. Compressed air is supplied to the diffusers under pressure from air blowers. The tank is filled with plastic media, which is barbotized under the impact of air from the blowers. The biofilm, the bacteria that perform the biological treatment, stick to the media. What do biofilters treat? They treat nitrogen, that is ammonia, which is released into the water during the fish life cycle. It's toxic as it accumulates and it needs to be removed from the system. So, the bacteria first convert ammonia into nitrate NO2, and at the second stage, bacteria convert NO2 into NO3 to nitrates, and nitrates are flushed out of the system. In this way, the water is treated biologically. So, by default, in the first biofilter chamber, fixed bed is used. And as for the second chamber of biofilter, it's recommended at industrial farms, and it should be operating on sinking media. 
but at the bottom of the biofilter there are no diffusers. Instead, there are perforated pipes, through which air is periodically supplied to flush the media. And the media stays static. It's a little bit different and heavier than water. So it makes a static layer. Water flows down from the top. Suspended matter is trapped by the media. And at the same time, the biofilter treats water of nitrogen, of course. Therefore, a chamber with sinking media provides for both secondary mechanical water treatment and biological treatment. Well, we have treated water from mechanical suspended matter from biological impurities. What next? And the next step is very simple. It's recommended to disinfect water. And here is very important nuance of water treatment system at a crayfish farm. You can't use ozone at such farms. That is, the experiments with ozone that have taken place haven't had good consequences. Crayfish is stunted in its growth as it's negatively affected by ozone, which is absolutely different with other fish species. At farms where other hydrobions are grown, ozone works fine and gives positive results. But if we are talking about a farm for Australian crayfish, you either don't install any disinfection units at all, and at amateur-made farms it's used rather often. But if you want the system to operate safely and without failure at an industrial farm, it's advisable to provide for a powerful ultraviolet disinfectant unit in order to ensure guaranteed water treatment of various pathogens. We have disinfected the water. What is to be done next? Of course, the water has to be heated. Surely, the circuit is closed. But even in a closed loop, you have fresh makeup water that is constantly supplied. There is evaporation, possibly air is cooled, so it's recommended to use a heat exchanger. By no means it should be an electric water heater, because in 90% of cases, electrical power is very costly, and this method of heating is rather unprofitable. Therefore, I recommend to provide for a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is connected to the hot circuit from the boiler. Hot water is supplied to it, and it automatically heats water in the whole system by means of a special automation system. Even by one or two degrees, but in some cases it's really of great importance. That is, as soon as the temperature drops, the sensor detects that and automatically switches on the heating system. Well, probably the last thing I would like to briefly cover is, of course, oxygen. What is about oxygenation at crayfish farms? There are actually several options. The simplest solution is to do nothing at all. You install a fixed bed biofilter, together with the aeration system. Basically, you obtain almost 100% saturation at the outlet. The stock intensity in the trace is low, the water exchange is sufficient. The farm can operate practically without oxygen. Once again, I would like to reiterate that it mostly concerns small, even so to say, household farms. If we are considering more or less industrial farms, there are two main options. The first one is to aerate the water directly in the trays. That is, you put diffusers, compressors and supply air to all the trays. I'll tell you right away, it's quite a costly technology in terms of electricity expenses. Thus, it would be better if you put an oxygenator. This is an inseparable part of a classic rest technology. The oxygenator is fed with oxygen from an oxygen concentrator. Oxygen is supplied when stock densities are high and when natural oxygen is simply not enough. Well, what can I say in addition? I could also add a pH control system, in case pH level deviates from the norm. And of course, a control panel is needed, which is a switchboard that will monitor and control all rice equipment and utility lines, that is heating, water supply, ventilation, air conditioning, all that doesn't concern and is not a part of a recirculating aquaculture system. Degassing is not necessary in such systems, because the crayfish stock intensity is minimal. Everything is relatively simple, and if you want to start with a small system with relatively low capacity, you can do with any locally available material and improvise in order to build your own crayfish farm. But if you want to grow crayfish at an industrial scale and an efficient, reliable and safe system, I recommend it to use industrial technology. This is Anton Pelcher. Today we have talked about a water treatment system at a rice farm for Australian red claw crayfish. I hope you found it useful. If so, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel. Bye!